Welcome to HackerTrading.com. This is Hari Swaminathan. And in this video, I want to show the differences between a credit spread and a debit spread in terms of the risk and reward profile and also the margin requirements for each of these positions. Now, if you've watched the intermediate series uh, courses, then you know that whenever you're a seller of options and um, when, you, when you put a credit spread on, you're assuming the profile of a seller of an option. So if you've gone through these courses, you know that when you're a seller of options, you have a lot more risk. So it's like buying insurance and being the insurance company. So if you, whenever we buy insurance, whether it's for our car or home, whatever, our risk in that uh, position is very small. It's the, the maximum we can lose is the amount that we pay for the insurance. However, for the insurance company, the reward is very small and the risk is quite large. So if something happens to your car or your house, then the insurance company is liable to pay for the entire amount. So that's exactly what a buyer and a seller of an option profile also is. Whenever you're a buyer of options, you have limited risk and unlimited reward. And whenever you're a seller of options, you have limited rewards and potentially very large risks. So that's the concept we want to try to get through in this uh, short video. So again, what we're going to do is uh, we're looking at Apple. So if we wanted to put a credit spread, and obviously uh, this concept will only apply to credit spreads because in credit spreads, we want to try to go out of the money. So whether it's a bear call credit spread or a bull put credit spread, this would apply in both cases. But for this short video to make sense, you should have watched uh, the courses on uh, the spreads. That's uh, module four. So let's say we're looking at Apple and we want to construct a credit spread by selling the 510 and buying the 500. So the way we do that is we sell a vertical and this is a vertical bull put spread. And what we'll do is um, I'll change the strike price from 505 to 500. So we are selling 10 contracts of the 510 and buying five, uh, 10 contracts of the 500. So the net result is that we get a credit of $1.77 per share. Now, we know that the width of the spread is a $10 wide spread. So whenever you have a $10 wide spread and you have a credit of, let's say, $1.75 in this case, then the risk in your trade is going to be the difference between the width of the spread, which is $10, and the credit that you received, which is 1.75. So our risk is going to be 8.25 or 8.23. Uh, these prices are changing right now because it's a live market. And so that's exactly what you see over here. So for 10 contracts, which is a thousand shares, your profit, your potential maximum profit on this is going to be $1.77. So which is 1,770 and the balance out of from 10,000 is going to be 8,280. So if you look at the risk profile of this trade, this is a bull put spread, which we've uh, seen in an earlier uh, video as well. But the maximum profit is if Apple expires anywhere from 510 or higher. So as long as Apple expires anywhere here, you're going to make your maximum profit, which is uh, 1,720. Now, if Apple goes below 510, then you're going to see losses. And your maximum loss is going to be 8,300 as shown right here. So that is if Apple expires below 510. In fact, it, it, uh, the break-even point is right here, and that's going to be 508.25. So if Apple expires below 508.25, you're going to see losses. So now why would you put on such a kind of a trade? Because you have probability on your side. Granted, you have a lot less reward and a lot more risk. But 
whenever you sell options and or whenever you sell a spread you're assuming the position of an insurance company and bear in mind that insurance companies are some of the largest companies in the world they have the largest financial basis so if their model did not work they wouldn't be such large companies so selling something that has a very low probability of uh, of uh, failure is a viable strategy and that's exactly what credit spreads are whether you're looking at a bull put spread using puts or if you're looking at a bear call spread on the higher side so if Apple's trading at 567 right now you could create a bear call spread also at say 630 or 640 level and as long as Apple doesn't cross that your bear call spread will make uh, your full profit in this case we've put on a bull put spread and if Apple doesn't hit 510 we've made our full profit so that's the uh, profile and if you see the margin requirement the margin requirement is going to be your maximum loss on this position so that's going to be 8250 and that's what your broker is going to hold as your buying power now we could reverse this situation and we could be a buyer of the spread and if we are a buyer of the spread then what we have is a bear put spread so now you can see that your margin requirement is only 1750 and that's exactly what your maximum loss is if Apple expires anywhere above 510 then you're going to see your maximum loss so in a bear put spread you want Apple to move down and past your strike price and your maximum profit is going to be right here it's going to be about 8220 so the profile is exactly reversed and that's what um, you'll see in all options positions the buyer and the seller have opposite positions but there's a fundamental difference in the choice of your strike prices depending upon whether you're a buyer or a seller of the spread if, if you were to buy this uh, bear put spread you would not buy it at the 5 ton strike price because the probability of Apple going there is so low that you know you can only make profits if Apple goes below 510 so why would you want to do that you would put a spread that is closer to the money perhaps at the money and you would put it at the maybe the 565 strike price or the 560 or maybe the even the 550 but if you go too far out of the money then probability is working against you and that's because the probability is working in favor of the seller so and you know as a buyer you have to be the opposite uh, profile and so that's exactly what it is your debit in this case in, in, in the case of a bear put spread you're going to have to pay this and that's going to be a dollar seventy eight and but that is your maximum loss you cannot lose anything more than that so this you know you always have to look at whether you want to be a buyer or a seller now there are other considerations also because whenever you're a buyer time decay is going to work against you so that's what this is whenever you have a negative theta position that means time decay is going to work against you so if we change this uh, to a seller you know now time decay is in your favor so as a seller of options time decay is in your favor so you know think about the insurance company right so if, if you've insured your car for a year then as time goes on um, it's nine months ten months uh, then you have you literally have only a month or two remaining in your policy after which uh, your uh, uh, the policy expires so it's the same thing uh, here also if you're a seller of options time decay is working in your favor and if you're a buyer of options time decay is working against you so hopefully uh, this has made a little bit more sense it's actually a more complex topic so you do need to understand the fundamentals of uh, all of these uh, issues that we just spoke of they are all covered in module 2 module 3 and module 4 if you have any questions please send us an email info at hackertrading.com otherwise I'll see you in another video thank you